Hey there Excel users, welcome to my Excel Power Tips channel. This is my first Excel accounting video where I'm going to be showing you how to calculate the depreciation of an asset using the reducing balance depreciation method. So for this calculation we've got three inputs. We've got an initial value of £50,000, we've got a depreciation rate of 30%, that's the rate at which the value goes down by every year, and then the final input is £5,000 and that's the residual value. The residual value is the minimum value. It's also referred to as the salvage value and once the asset reaches that value it doesn't go down further uh, for later years. Now to make the depreciation formulas easier to understand what I've done is for the three inputs initial value, depreciation rate and residual value I've replaced the cell references with meaningful names. So for example, if I click on cell C5, so that's column C and then row 5, if you look at this name box here, that refers to the cell reference for the cell that you've selected. Now if you click on that, you can replace it with a name and rather than uh, refer to cell C5 in formulas, you can refer to the name which represents D5. So for cell C7, I've given it a name range of initial underscore value and then for cell C9 which is the depreciation rate I've given it a name range of DEPR underscore rate and finally for the residual value the final input for the calculation I've given it a name range of residual underscore value and so each of those names they're going to be referred to uh, in the formulas so rather than using cell references you'll be seeing uh, those name ranges so doing it that way you will see that the formulas are easier to understand. The depreciation table has six columns. The first column is the year and that's the year of the depreciation. The next column is the value of the start of the year so that's the value of the asset at the beginning of the year. The next column is the depreciation value that's the the value the asset has fallen down by the depreciation amount for that year and then the depre depreciation percentage is the depreciation value expressed as a percentage of the value at the start of the year. Then the next column is the depreciation RT which is the running total. And that's the cumulative running total of the depreciation value per year. And then the final column is the value at the end of the year and that's the value of the asset at the end of the year and that is a uh, the depreciation value taken away from the value at the start of the year to give you the value of the asset at the end of the year. For the depreciation calculation table, uh, the first year is the year of the depreciation and then the second column is the value of the start of the year and that's equals initial value. So rather than put C7, uh, to make it meaningful, I've used equals initial underscore value which represents C7 for the name range. Then the depreciation value uses this formula here. So I've got given an example for row 15. So what it's doing is there's an if formula here. So the first part of the if formula is a logical test. And the logical test has, if you like, two parts. So the first part is it's taking off the depreciation percent value from the value start of the year for F15. And then for that calculation, after, after that subtraction has been made, it checks to see if it's less than the residual value, which is £1,000 in this calculation example. If that is true, then we can't allow that to happen. So uh, for the calculation of the depreciation, what we do is um, we just take off the residual value, £5,000 from the value of the start of the year. Now, if the test is um, not true, whereby uh, the calculation, the first part, is greater than the residual value, then what we do then is a third part of the if formula. We multiply the depreciation rate, which is 30%, against F15, which is the value of the start of the year. So the depreciation percentage is simply the depreciation value expressed as a percentage of the value of the start of the year. And the depreciation RT is the running total, that's a cumulative running total. So that uses the if formula. And the first part of the if formula for the cell reference is absolute reference. And the second part is row relative. So when you copy it down, for example, here in row 12, 
22, uh, the first part is fixed, and then the, the second part is uh, showing row 22. First part, row 15 fixed, and second part, row 22, which is relative. And then the value of the start, the value at the end of the year is simply the value of the start of the year minus the depreciation value. So, for example, 35,000 is 50,000 minus 15,000 gives you 35,000 pounds. For year two, the value of the start of the year is going to be the same as the value at the end of the year. So, in the examples I've highlighted in yellow, so for the value at the end of the year for year one is 35,000, and that's carried forward to year two, which will be the value of the start of the year. Another example is a, this example here, 8,404, which is the value for year five, and that's carried forward uh, to the start of the year for year six. You'll notice from this table that the depreciation percentage is always 30%. But for year seven, in this calculation, uh, which is highlighted in yellow, it's 15%. Because when you look at the depreciation value, uh, because it uses this if formula, um, if you look at the first part of the uh, if formula when it does this test, when you take off the uh, value of the depreciation from the value of the start of the year, 5,822. And if you do that, it'll make the value less than 5,000, less than residual value. So this part is then true. So in that case, what it's doing is just going to take off 5,000 from the value of the start of the year, F15 minus the residual value. Then you get a value of 882. And then 882 expresses a percentage of the value of the start of the year is then 15%. And then the rest of the formula columns work in the same way. So the next year, which is year eight, uh, when we carry forward the value at the end of the year from year seven to year eight, um, it's basically reached its minimum value. So again, if you look at the formula there, if you take off the, uh, the value of the depreciation uh, away from the, the value of the start of the year, it's less than the residual value, so that's again true. And then what it's doing is then it's taking off the value of the start of the year from the residual value. So that's basically 5,000 minus 5,000 equals zero. And that's always going to be the case for later years. The final two calculations I've created are put above the depreciation table, and that's the total amount of depreciation. And then you've got the years taken to reach the residual value. So the first one, 45,000, that's basically using a max formula. And it's doing a max formula on this column here, the running total. Once the asset reaches the uh, residual value, the minimum value, there's no further depreciation. So for year seven and eight, you'll see that the, the depreciation running total is then constant. Uh, that's 45,000, but that just does a max. In calculation, the year is taken to reach uh, the residual value, the minimum value, seven years. And what that does is it looks at column H, which is the depreciation percentage, and check to see how many of these uh, percentages greater than zero. So once it reaches its residual value, uh, then there's no further depreciation. So uh, that's not counted. So the number of um, cells, which are more than 0%, that would be the number of years taken to do the calculation. And it's all dynamic. So uh, the calculation, so that if you put different values, say we put an initial value of 30,000 pounds, and then we put a depreciation rate of 40%, and a minimum, residual or salvage value is 2,000 pounds, we'll see that the total amount of depreciation for this asset is 28,000 pounds uh, for initial value of 30,000 pounds and years taken to each the residual value six years. Thanks for watching and watch out for my next video.